We talked in the lecture about why the private sector might underprovide public goods. If you run a business and you can't stop someone from consuming your product, that is if it's non-excludable, and one person consuming the product doesn't stop other people from enjoying it, that is if it's non-rival, then it's hard to make a profit. But at the same time, we see lots of cases where the private sector does provide those public goods. I hang out at a beach in northern Massachusetts where every July 4th a certain family shoots off fireworks for the whole beach to see, and none of us pay. A private family is providing a public good. So does that mean there's no free rider problem? Well, that depends on how much this family cares about making other folks happy. Let's call this family the Smiths. If the Smiths only care about themselves, then they may shoot off fireworks, but it will still be too little. Since the Smiths don't account for my benefit, only theirs, they'll only buy fireworks until the marginal cost equals their marginal benefit. But this ignores the benefits that myself and others get from the fireworks. As a result, the private benefits to the Smiths are lower than the private benefits to everyone on the beach. But what if the Smiths also care about other people's enjoyment of the fireworks? That is, the Smiths might be altruistic. Their utility might actually incorporate the utility of other people in the maximization decision. Suppose that the Smiths care so much about me and my friends that the Smiths marginal benefit includes not only their own visual benefits, but all of ours as well. Then they'll do the right thing and set off the right amount of fireworks. That is, if the Smiths consider my benefits part of their benefits, then their private marginal benefits are the social marginal benefits. Now this seems unlikely, but there is lots of evidence that altruism does exist to some extent. One famous example economists have studied is the dictator game. The dictator game is a game played between two people. The first player is given $10 and has to decide on how to split the money. He can say, I'll take $9 and give you a dollar, or I'll take $6 and give you $4. Once the first player makes the offer, the second player decides whether to accept the offer. If the second player accepts, they split the money the way the first player suggested. But if the second player rejects, both players get nothing. So let's figure out what should happen. First, what would you do if you were the first player and if you are just going to play once? Well, the way an economist would think about this is to use the tools of game theory we learned about earlier. You'd think about what strategy the opposing player will use and choose the best strategy given that other player's strategy. So what strategy would the opposing player use? Well, for her, the choice is either take what the first player offers or turn it down and get zero. So that means that so long as the first player offers more than zero, she should take it. The opportunity cost of taking it is zero. So now that you know this about player two, what should you do? You should offer as little as possible. You should offer that you'll keep $9 and she'll only get a dollar. And she'll take it because it's still better than the alternative of getting nothing. But when this experiment's run in practice, this isn't what actually happens. First of all, player one in this game often offers a 50-50 split or something close to it. Second of all, if player two gets an offer below 50-50, she often turns it down, preferring zero to an offer that's perceived as unfair. This suggests that people care about more than just themselves. They care about fairness too. Fairness can mean a lot of things. It could mean that both players end up close to equal. It could mean that your utility depends on your partner's payoff. But the bottom line is that people do seem to show some altruism. Now, is altruism big enough to overcome the free rider problem? Generally not. When players play this game enough times to figure it out, the split ends up closer to 70-30 than to 50-50. But given the payout should be even more lopsided, altruism does seem to have an important effect.